in this age of huge amounts of information. As technology has become an important part of our daily lives, it has also made us feel lonely and connected at the same time. This is an old story, but things have changed a lot since cell phones, the internet, and all the social networks came along. A touch screen lets us talk to tens of thousands of people, but do we really connect with them? We get the impression that everyone is always happy, successful, and liked on these sites. But after every lonely, sad moment or finally, the night is still just me, as I know I'm sad. We can't help but think about the cycle-like truth behind those words. In a virtual world full of beautiful pictures, they show an obvious truth. There are a lot of people whose real lives are empty and without friends. A new poll by YouGov found that millennials, people born between the early 1980s and late 1990s, are the most lonely age. The study talked to 200 people in the US who were 18 years or older. The answers were mostly about feeling awkward and having personal worries. 15% of baby boomers and 20% of Gen X said they always feel lonely, but 30% of Gen Y said the same thing. 22% said they don't have any close friends, and 30% said they don't even know who their best friend is. This makes me wonder, does the fact that we don't have real friends say something about who we are as people? The movie for today is the answer you're looking for. We'll talk about nine things that have to do with not having friends so that you can understand the problem and find real answers. This movie will help us figure out if we're missing these deep connections. And more importantly, it will show us how Stoicism is connected to the fact that we don't have many friends or real interactions these days. Number one, not being good with people. Every single one of us is different. There are people who shine in groups and people who find peace in being alone. Stoic thought has helped us understand and accept that not having social skills is not a sign of weakness, but a normal part of being human. Stoic thought says that not having good social skills is not a problem, but a chance to get better and grow as a person. Stoicism not only shows us how to accept ourselves as we are, flaws and all, but it also helps us find our own worth and happiness. We don't have to be the life of every party or fit in with everyone. Instead, real power comes from knowing that one's own heart and soul can grow strong happiness and confidence. From the point of view of Stoicism, people tell us to focus on making good ties instead of lots of them. One strong bond. More value can be gained from one deep link than from hundreds of shallow ones. The story of Mike and Anna makes this very clear. Mike suffers from bad communication, and he gets tense when there are a lot of people around. But he has a close friend named Anna that he loves very much. They were sitting in a quiet cafe one day. Katie told Mike that he felt bad about himself because he didn't have as many friends as other people. At the same time, Anna told Mike that their deep connection was worth a lot more than a lot of other shallow connections. Mike starts to change his mind about friendship after this talk. He realizes that not having good social skills isn't always a bad thing and can actually help you focus on making real connections with other people. Finally, Stoicism tells us that everyone is valuable, no matter how many friends they have or how well they can get along with others. When we learn to love and accept ourselves, we know that the real power is not in taking over the outside world, but in taking over and understanding the inside world. In this crazy world, the key to real freedom that Stoicism seeks is being able to stand on your own two feet and not rely on outside approval. Many people find it hard to figure out how to connect with others. Some people naturally do well in social situations and can easily connect with others, while others may have trouble for a variety of reasons. Being awkward around other people can make you feel alone, angry or even anxious. You can improve your social skills and make real connections with others, though, if you understand, are patient and practice.
This book gives you tips and ideas that will help you handle social situations with more confidence. Self-acceptance and awareness. It's okay if you're not usually good at getting along with other people. Being self-aware is the first thing that can help you get better. Accept both your skills and weaknesses and be kind to yourself. Understanding social cues. Pay attention to things like tone of voice, body language, and facial emotions that people do not say. Knowing these signs can help you figure out how someone is feeling and react in the right way, which will lead to better communication. Give the person talking your full attention, keep eye contact, and ask questions to help you understand. This is active hearing. Show that you are interested in what other people are saying and don't talk over them or stop them. Empathy and seeing things from other people's points of view. To improve your empathy, try to understand how other people feel and see things. Responding with empathy shows that you value and respect other people's situations, which makes your relationships stronger. Practice and patience. You can get better at social skills just like you can get better at any other skill. Push yourself to leave your comfort zone, do social things, and get used to being in a variety of social settings over time. No matter how small your growth is, be proud of it and be patient with yourself as you learn. By putting these lessons into practice over and over again, you can gradually feel more at ease and sure of yourself in social situations, which will help you make stronger connections and improve your relationships with other people. Take it one step at a time. Remember that everyone has a different path to follow. Number two, choices for living. As we search for who we are and the deepest meaning of life, we often come across different ways to live. Each choice has its own unique mark on it. From a stoic point of view, though, this choice is more than just the choices we make every day about where to live, what to do for a living, and who to hang out with. In addition, it says a lot about how we choose to live our lives. So, living a life based on stoic thought isn't just about changing how you act and think. It's also about developing virtue and wisdom, a life that is both simple in terms of money and emotionally rich. According to Stoicism, each person is in charge of their own peace and happiness, getting over relying on outside forces and bad feelings. In order to live a simple and focused life, they avoid showing off and value the quality of their relationships and belongings over the quantity of those things. Self-improvement is the main goal of this way of life. To reach spiritual and intellectual mastery, we always try to study and think on ourselves. Realize that the keys to true happiness are to accept and adjust to the changes that happen in your life. Don't misunderstand me, though. That doesn't mean we should give up on everything. Instead, they should learn to accept the things that can't be changed. At the same time, be ready to deal with problems. If you are a mother who works full-time and takes care of your family, you probably don't have much time for friends and family. There are times when you miss chances to spend time with family and friends. You can get a better mix between work and social life by making changes to the way you live. Figure out better ways to use your time, to set aside time to hang out with family and friends, like going shopping or for coffee. You will be happier with your family and friends, and your relationships will get stronger. Picking a lifestyle is more than just choosing how to live each day. It's also a commitment to growing as a person and finding peace within yourself. Kindly rate the movie. If you like the way of life, making choices all the time is what life is all about. Every decision we make, no matter how small or big, affects our lives. Choices for Living is a philosophy that stresses how important it is to make mindful choices in order to live a happy life. 
It recognizes that the big and small decisions we make shape who we are and the roads we follow. We can go through life with purpose, integrity and satisfaction if we know how powerful the choices we make are. Here are five important things you should learn about choices for living. Self-awareness. Knowing yourself is the first step to making smart decisions. Being self-aware means knowing our own views, values, strengths and weaknesses. By getting to know ourselves well, we can make decisions that are in line with our true wants and needs. Clear purpose. If we don't have a clear sense of purpose, the decisions we make might not have any direction or meaning. Figuring out our purpose gives us a way to make choices that will help us grow and be happy in the long run. Responsibility. The decisions you make have effects and you need to own up to them in order to grow as a person. Recognizing the results of our choices, whether they were good or bad, gives us the power to learn, change and grow. The courage to choose. When we make decisions, we often have to leave our comfort zones and face the unknown. Having the courage to choose means letting go of what makes us feel bad and believing in our ability to handle what we don't know. It takes being strong when things go wrong and a desire to go after what's important to us. Accepting change. Life is always changing, so the decisions we make must also change with it. Accepting change means being open to new options and changing our plans when we need to. To make room for growth and change, we need to be able to adapt, be strong, and be ready to let go of what doesn't serve us anymore. The main idea of Choices for Living is to live our lives with awareness, purpose, and bravery. We can make a life that fits our values, interests, and goals by recognizing the power of our choices. This will lead to more happiness and fulfillment. Number three, things are changing. There are a lot of unpredictable changes in our lives, from our jobs to our ties with other people. Stoicism, on the other hand, has a deep understanding that can help you understand these changes, especially when you've lost a relationship. Change is a part of nature that you can't escape, so find happiness inside yourself. No matter what outside forces are at play, going through changes like losing friends doesn't have to be a bad thing. As an alternative, it might be a wake-up call to take care of ourselves and focus on making and keeping good relationships instead of lots of them. When things in our lives change, we need to get our minds ready to go to places we've never been before. Stoicism tells us to look for community in these new situations. Everything, including the people and the place you live, seems strange and unfair when you move. Milia to you right to quickly join in. To make getting around easier, start learning about the public transportation system where you live. Take a look around to find stores, bars, and basic services like banks and grocery stores. Take part in activities in your neighborhood to meet new people. Meeting new people at social events and talks is a good way to grow your social network. As time goes on, you get used to the place and feel like you're starting a new life there. This will not only help you make new friends, but it will also help you feel like you fit which is very important in a world full of change and uncertainty. The Stoic theory tells us to focus on adapting and finding happiness inside ourselves. We can grow as people and keep good relationships by being open to and able to adjust to all changes. Are you ready to make choices that change based on new information? If you're ready, please write something. Yes. After the video's comments area, and before moving on to the next subject, let me tell you about Leo, who works as an accountant at a bank and has a lot going on. Even now, Leo still finds time for both work and family. After he got off work, he spent time enjoying 10 years of marriage. He doesn't work harder, but he does try very hard to improve the quality of both parts of his life.
making life more satisfying. You might be very interested and want to know how Leo is able to keep everything in balance. Number 4. Changing what's important. Changing your goals is a natural part of life, and it's also a great way to learn more about yourself and grow as a person. People may have big plans for their careers, but family duties may become less important at this time. Because it is so deep, Stoicism has given us a wise view that inner peace and true happiness are not ends in themselves, but rather partners on the path to finding the deep meaning of life. When we accept that life is always changing, we stop trying to adapt to it. We also stop trying to change ourselves. Every choice you make, from putting time and effort into your job, to spending time with family and friends, shows what's most important to you right now. Being able to accept and change is important, but we also worry about having a worthwhile life. Do it now. Do we really want to do what's important? Do we spend time with the people and things that make our lives more meaningful by making us think and rethink our priorities? We learn not only how to live a healthy life, but also how to find and keep relationships that are real and important to us. This is the core of a stoic life, one that is rich not only in material things, but also in soul and spirit. In a world full of distractions and competing priorities, it's very important to be able to figure out what's most important and shift your attention on purpose. Changing what's important isn't just randomly shifting our priorities, it means recognizing how our lives, ideals and goals are changing. To help you on this life-changing journey, here is a short lesson in five points examining and thinking about yourself. First, think deeply about your present values and priorities. What makes you go? What do you want to achieve in the future? Check to see if your present focus is in line with these goals, or if it's not. Find your core values. Write down your core ideas. These ideas are what you use to make choices and decide what to do. Figuring out what's important to you can help you make sense of life's challenges. Look at outside influences. Look at the outside things that are affecting your priorities. Do national norms, peer pressure, or social norms tell you what's important to you? Tell the difference between outside forces and what you really want. Accept and value flexibility and adaptability. Think about the fact that goals can change over time. Accept that you may need to reevaluate and change your approach as things change. Things that are important today might not be as important tomorrow. Do something with a purpose. Once you know what's important and have made a conscious choice about your goals, you should act with purpose. Align the things you do and the choices you make every day with your new goal. Remember that change is an ongoing process that needs ongoing work. Change what's important to you is a journey of self-discovery, reflection and deliberate action. By becoming more self-aware, figuring out your core values, evaluating outside influences, being open to change and taking deliberate action, you give yourself the power to create a life that fits your greatest hopes and values. Number 5. Lack of Trust After being betrayed by a co-worker at your previous job, you may find yourself in a situation where you find it difficult to trust others. In this scenario, you might make a new acquaintance who is trustworthy and amiable at work. But because of your past, you're hesitant to confide in that co-worker and aren't sure if you should. Fortunately, you arrived here and paused at topic number five, which deals with trust. I'll give you further insight into how you might see that you need to adjust the way you approach relationships. The question of trust needs to be viewed from both an individual perspective and the larger framework of our interactions with the outside world. Stoic thought. 
Stressing maintaining self-control and reacting to circumstances, logically as opposed to purely emotionally, is important. The notion that people are frequently influenced by outside factors is another crucial component of the Stoic interpretation of trust. Instead than relying just on other people's deeds, trust should be founded on a profound comprehension and acceptance of human nature's imperfections. We learn to trust our own abilities to handle and accept things even when they might not go our way during this self-evolving process. The trust issue is more than just a personal barrier. It's also a chance for introspection and development. This calls for self-awareness and the capacity to modify one's perspective in order to approach uncertainty in a cool, collected manner. The objective is to learn how to accept and wisely handle trust risks rather than to completely avoid them. Thus, by confronting and resolving trust concerns, the problem of trust presents us with a great opportunity to grow in self-awareness and understanding. In addition to enhancing our life skills, we also deeply spiritually grow with the goal of being the best versions of ourselves in a difficult and unstable environment. So, how would you respond to the question of whether or not to trust a new colleague? Kindly respond in the space provided for comments below. Number 6. Differences, Interests, This Life Everyone has their own life, hobbies and thoughts. It's not just a normal part of being human to have different tastes, it's also a chance to learn more about each other and be more tolerant. The Stoic philosophy tells us to find peace within ourselves by accepting and honouring these differences. We shouldn't feel sad or alone because we don't have the same hobbies as other people. Having different hobbies can lead to the end of a relationship. That's not always a bad thing, though. Every one of us is told to follow our own hobbies and grow them without worrying about what other people think. This gives us more freedom to find happiness and purpose in our lives on our own. Truly, being happy and at peace with ourselves does not depend on getting along with everyone else. We should instead learn to value and honor the differences between people. Everyone has something special to offer and is valuable in their own way. Realizing this helps us not only understand other people better, but it also opens our minds to new things and makes our own life more interesting. You and a close friend may find it hard to connect at first because you both like different things. For example, you might love sports and your friend might love art. You choose to find out more about your friend's love of painting, though. At the same time, it helps your close friend understand how much you love sports. In this way, you not only learn new things, but you also make chances to share basic values like passion, creativity and dedication. This will not only make your relationship with your friend better, but it will also help you become friends even though you have different hobbies at first. Interest differences shouldn't be seen as a huge reason why people can't connect with each other. We should instead see it as an important part of our lives that helps us grow as people and learn more about the world around us. Different hobbies and points of view can lead to curiosity, acceptance and finally insight. All of these things are very important to people who live a quiet lifestyle. Number 7. Mental Well-Being Stoic ideas say that taking care of your mental health is important for keeping your feelings and thoughts in check. It's also the key to finding inner peace. In the seventh topic we will look at the beauty and power of mental health through the view of Stoicism. We will also look at how it can change our lives, even when we feel alone or lonely. According to the Stoic theory, Mental health can be shown in four main ways. First, control yourself and accept yourself. We have no power over anything, not even how many friends we have. We can change how we feel about this situation, though. Accepting that our mood doesn't depend on how many friends we have, 
will help us feel better mentally. Second, pay attention to the present. It is even more important to not think about the past or the future and just live in the moment. Being in the present moment can help lower stress and improve mental health. Third, knowing yourself. Knowing yourself is a big part of it. Getting to know yourself and what's important to you will help you create and live a more worthwhile life. Fourth, facing challenges means not avoiding them. Instead, you should deal with them and learn from them. Being able to deal with loneliness and hard times helps build grit, which will have a big positive effect on mental health. To sum up, taking care of your mental health is more than just staying away from bad feelings. In order to live a worthwhile life, it's also about strengthening your spirituality. Also, make and keep in touch with people you might become friends with. When we align that with Stoic wisdom, we bring people together through shared thoughts, which leads to a deep and meaningful relationship. Do you know how to use the four things when it comes to mental health? Leave a comment. I'm ready for you to show how determined you are. A brief history of mental health. Mental health is the state of our emotional, mental and social well-being. It changes the way we think, feel and act. It also changes how we deal with stress, connect with others and make decisions. Why mental health is important? Mental health is just as important for general health as physical health. Having good mental health helps us deal with the problems that come up in life, keep healthy relationships, work well, and make important contributions to society. Common Mental Health Disorders Some common mental health disorders are anxiety disorders, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia. People with these conditions may have big changes in how they think, feel, and act. Stigma Around mental health, it's a sad fact that many societies still stigmatize and discriminate against people with mental health problems. This shame can keep people from getting help, which can leave conditions untreated and cause needless pain. Promoting mental health. To promote mental health, you need to make people more resilient create supportive settings, and make sure people can get mental health care. It's important to put yourself first, keep good relationships, get professional help when you need it, and fight for acceptance and awareness of mental health. Starting off, even though mental health is an important part of our general health, it's often ignored or shamed in society. We will talk about why mental health is important, some common mental illnesses, the shame that surrounds them, and ways to improve mental health in this lesson. It is important to understand and deal with mental health issues if we want to make communities and people healthier and happier. Number eight, lack of social opportunities. Stoicism stresses that you should find happiness and satisfaction inside yourself instead of relying on outside events. This means that we can still find and build real, deep connections, even when we don't have much to do with other people. In a world where people don't talk to each other as much, we're told to focus on keeping ties strong. A real friend is someone with whom you can share your happiness and sadness and who supports you as you try to become better and live a moral life. Sharing and talking about life, beliefs and values is one way to build relationships when you don't have a lot of social freedom. It's possible to connect deeply with others on a spiritual and intellectual level when we share our thoughts and ideas. Stoicism also tells us to work on becoming the best version of ourselves and learn more about ourselves. Not only do we attract people who think like us, but we can also inspire those around us and build real ties with them. Social networks and technology are also smart ways to find new ways to connect with other people. While these tools can't replace talking to someone in person, they can help us keep in touch and grow our relationships when we don't have time or room to do so.
To sum up, not having enough social possibilities is not an insurmountable problem when we accept what we have and make the most of it. We can build connections that are deep, meaningful, and last a long time. In the connected world we live in now, social chances are very important to our experiences, relationships, and health as a whole. However, for many people, not having these kinds of chances can have big impacts on different parts of their lives. Lack of social connections can cause feelings of loneliness, disconnection, and even mental health problems. This can happen because of where you live, your job, or your personal situation. Recognizing and dealing with this problem is important for making communities more welcoming and helping people live full lives. Isolation and loneliness. People often feel alone and isolated when they don't have many social chances. People are naturally social and having meaningful interactions with other people helps us feel like we fit and have a purpose in life. Without these interactions, people might feel cut off from their communities and friends, which could make them feel bad. Effects on mental health. Not having enough social chances can have a big effect on mental health. Studies have shown over and over that being alone a lot makes you more likely to have sadness, anxiety, and other mental health problems. Without the support and friendship of social ties, people may find it harder to deal with the challenges of life and their overall health may get worse. Personal growth limitations. Interacting with other people is a great way to grow and improve as a person. People learn new things, gain new skills, and understand themselves and the world around them better through talks, shared experiences, and being exposed to different points of view. Without these contacts, growth may stop, which can make a person feel stuck or unfulfilled. Problems with networking and chances to make connections. Social networks are very important for getting ahead in your personal and business life. But people who don't have many social chances might find it hard to make and keep these networks. Because of this, they might miss out on good job chances, mentorship and social support networks, which makes them feel even more left out and down. Number 9. Being shy or introverted for shy people. Getting and staying in relationships can be hard in its own way. Stoic thought says that being shy or quiet is never a bad thing. Through deep reflection and self-awareness, we can use this unique part of ourselves to live a good and happy life. People who are introverted can find their hidden skills and shine in the way they want to. At the same time, make sure you have good relationships based on morals and honest feelings. In order to better understand this problem, let's look at the life of Alex, who is quiet and likes to work. Stoic thought taught him a lot of useful things about how to accept things as they are and make relationships better. We can clearly see how the Stoic theory can be used in real life through Alex's story. This will make us think again about how we think about shyness and introversion. Be kind to yourself. Alex is no longer shy because he knows how to accept himself as he is. The thing is, Alex doesn't see this as a problem. He knows that being shy has its benefits and helps him become more self-aware and improve himself. Alex knows his skills and weaknesses because he knows himself very well. Instead of avoiding social events, he uses his awareness to improve his ability to talk to people and get along with them, the strength of being quiet. Every day, Alex finds peace by writing in his notebook about his thoughts and feelings about life. This helps him keep his mind in check and build connections based on deep thinking. Alex doesn't care about how many friends he has, what matters to him is how good the friendship is. As an alternative to doing a lot of social things, Alex chooses to hang out with friends who are truly like-minded and can build strong bonds with them. 
Stoic philosophy helped Alex live a moral life and focus on his own values instead of letting other people's views and criticism affect him. Alex thinks it's important to think about yourself, follow morals, and make your life worthwhile and satisfying. Thank you for seeing our movie. Last but not least, good luck on your journey toward knowledge. The next step will lead you to a new area where you can learn and explore even more. Keep in mind that we always have the power to create happiness and wealth within ourselves. If you like this video and want to learn more about Stoic philosophy or share your story, please click the like button to help us. Leave a comment on this topic or share a story that has inspired you. Be sure to tell in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Thanks for watching. We will see you in the next video.